Hi guys, it's Karina. Um, so we all know that the coronavirus um, pandemic is going on. So instead of being able to go in a classroom and teach a lesson, we are back on YouTube. So today I'm gonna do another geometry lesson, um, basically about telling time with an analog clock. So we have a little worksheet here that we're gonna go through. I have about, I think it's 10 problems. One, two, yeah, 12 problems. So a nice number for me. <laughs> but we're going to go through and we're just going to kind of give you a brief um, lesson on either how to teach, how to um, read an analog clock and also record it. Um, so the first thing that you're really going to look for when you're reading an analog clock is the little hands here on our clocks. See that? So we all know, or if you don't know, that if you are looking to read an analog clock, you are going to look for um, the small hand, which is in on our worksheet right here. It's going to be in blue. Um, the small hand always represents the hour. And so when you're writing the time, you want to make sure you always put the hour first and the minute second. And that's also how you read your clock as well. So when you read an analog clock, you're always reading um, your small hand to your long hand. So the big hand, or in this case, our like black hand that we have, um, it is going to be representing our minutes. So we're gonna just go over this. So we have our first problem here, right here. And we see that the blue hand is gonna be on three. So we know we're gonna write down three. So we know that's the hour. And then we're going to follow the black hand because the black hand has our minutes. So when you are looking at an analog clock, all of the, the numbers represent a time. So um, every number represents a time on the fives. So if we have one, that represents five. If we have two, ten. If we have three, three represents fifteen. Four represents twenty. Five represents twenty-five. Six represents thirty. We have 7, which represents 35, 8, which represents 40, 9 represents 45, 10 represents 50, 11, 55, and 12 is just going to be that, um, that repeat on that, that reset. So if we go from 2 to 12, it's going to be that next hour. Okay, so we got this we're starting with. So we see that the blue hand, which is our hour hand, is on the 3. So from that, we're going to start by writing three. And then we're just going to look for where that, that black hand is because our black hand is going to tell us our minutes. So if we have our black hand, looks like it's pointing to two. So we know two times five would equal ten. So minutes must be ten. So we're going to write three, ten. Awesome. And then we're going to move on to our second little clock here. And so when we're doing um, our time, we're always going to look for that hour, or that small hand first. So we have the blue. This one's going to be a little tricky, but since it is between 11 and 12, and it's not yet on that 12 mark, we're going to always round down to that letter to the side. So that is going to be 11. So we're going to write as our hour as 11. And then we are going to look here at our long hand. Our long hand points to the 8, and so we know that that is 40. So we're going to write 40. So we have 1140 for that first, for that second clock. All right, guys, and we're going to move on to the next. So we have, we're looking for that blue hand. And so since it's between 6 and 7, but it's not quite on the 7, we're going to assume and always know that's going to be the hour marked before. So we're going to mark 6. All right, so we have the hour as six. So we're gonna look for that long hand. And it is also on the six. So if we do six times five, we know six times five is 30. Or we can do five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So we know that six represents 30. So we're gonna write 30 minutes for our minutes. Awesome. And we're gonna move on to the next. And the next one we have, we're looking at our short hand, our blue hand, and that is, it looks like at the 10 o'clock. So we're gonna start by writing the hour. We're gonna write the 10. And then we're gonna look at the minutes. 
and the minutes. See, you're on that three. So we're going to go to the three. So we have five, ten, fifteen. So our minutes are going to be fifteen. Awesome. So we have ten, fifteen. All right, now we're going to go to the next. And this one, we're going to look for the shorthand. And it's between 11 and 12, but it's not quite on that 12 yet. So we're going to assume it's 11. So we'll do 11 for the hour. And then we're going to look for that long hand, and that long hand's going to represent the minutes. So it's on 7, so we're going to do their math. We're going to do 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. So we know our minutes are going to be 35, so we have 11, 35. All right, so now we're going to our next little clock here. So we have the shorthand on the one. And so since it's at the one, we're gonna put the one for the hour. And so you guys, like I said, the 12, the 12 represents 60. So 60, when we see the 60, we're always gonna round up, um, we're always gonna go to the next number. So if we have 12, and the one, like in our example here, we're always going to say that 12 represents zero. So if we have the little hand on the one and the 12, the long hand on the 12, we're going to say that 12 represents zero. So we're going to have one o'clock even. Because there's 60 minutes, um, 60 seconds in a minute. So when we have that 12, we know 12 times 5 is 60. So the 60 is going to just be at placeholder of zero. So we're always going to go up to the next minute. Okay, guys? All right, so we're going to go to the next, and the next one we're going to look for that short hand or that blue hand. And we're going to see it's a little bit past the six, but it's still before the seven. So we know our hour is going to be six o'clock. So we're going to start by writing the hour, which is six o'clock, and then we're going to go to the black hand or that minute hand here, the long hand. And we're going to see it's on the 5, so we're going to count. We're going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So we have our minutes since it's 5. It's going to be 25. So you have 6, 25. All right. And then the next one we have here is, since we have the minute hand, so we saw before that the minute hand on 12 was a 0. But when we actually have our hour hand or our shorthand here, it's always going to be that 12. So even though we have here that 0 or 12 represents a 0 placeholder, when we use the shorthand, the hour hand, it's automatically going to be the 12. Because when we do our when we read our hours, we read it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. But when we read our minutes, we go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, and 60. So that's why when you do minutes, it's going to represent zero. But when you do hours, it's going to represent that 12. So we're going to write 12 for the hour. And then we're going to move on to our minutes. So we see it is on the 1. So we already know that 1 equals 5 for minutes. So we have 05. Because when we do 5... We have that, um, we have to add in that zero because that zero represents the five. If we did the 12, five, zero, it would be a totally different time, you know, guys. So make sure when you're doing just single handed digits before you get into the two, into the double digits, we always want to put a zero in front so that way that placeholder is correct when we're reading. All right, so we'll go to the next one. And the next one is between 12 and 1. So we know it's going to be 12 because it's not quite 1. So we're going to put the hour down for 12. All right, so we get the hour down for 12. And then we're going to count to by fives for our minute hand. So we have 5, 10, 15, and 20. So we know 4 times 5 is 20. So the placeholder here would be 20 minutes. So we're going to write 12, 20. Awesome. Be starting to kind of understand you guys, seeing these examples. Hopefully it's nice and easy, simple breakdown for this. All right, we got just a few more. 
And then we have here, we're going to look for the hour because we always want to read the hour before we read the minutes. So we see that the hour is between 5 and 6, but it's not quite 6 yet. So we're going to make sure that we have it on 5. So we're going to write the hour for 5. And then we're going to look at that big hand here. And we're going to count. So we see it's on 9, so we're going to count by 5. So we have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. So we know that 9 represents 45, so we have 45 minutes. Okay. And to the next one. The next one, we're going to go and we're going to do it again, guys. We're going to look at the hour, which is our blue hand here. And we see that it is almost to the 10, but it's not quite to the 10. So we're always going to assume that it's going to be that one before it. So it's going to be that 9. So we're going to write the hour down as 9. And then we're going to look at the big hand. And we see that the big hand here is that 11. So we're going to count by fives, guys. We have... 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, and 11 represents 55. So we're going to write for minutes 55. Awesome. And we got one more, you guys. So we're going to look for the hour, that blue hand here. And we see that it's almost to the 8. But it's not quite there. So we're always going to round down to the 7, or to the previous number. So we have 7 for the hour. And we're going to look at the minutes here. And the minutes are pointing towards 10. So then we're going to count by 5s. We have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, and 50. So we have 7.50. Awesome. So we know for um, basic reading for analog clocks is the first thing you're always going to look for is the hand. So we always know the short hand is always going to represent hours and the long hand is always going to represent the minutes. We know that when we are reading an analog clock for hours, we're always going to go by the main sequence numbers that we have here. So when you're reading for hours, you're always going to read between 1 and 12. And we know that for minutes... They always are going to be represented in intervals of five. So when we have one, that actually means five. And another big thing that we do um, need to remember when we're reading an analog clock is that I know sometimes when the numbers get a little bit higher and they get a little bit closer to that 12 o'clock mark, um, they're going to see that it looks really, really close to the next number, but make sure that you just look at the numbers it's between. So if it's between 9 and 10, but it's not quite at 10 o'clock, we always can assume it's going to be rounded down. Okay, guys? So instead of it being 10 o'clock right here, it's going to be 9 o'clock because that hour hasn't, hasn't quite made it to that 10 o'clock mark. And another important thing before we go is definitely just a reminder on for the hours. So when we're reading hours, like I said, we have that face value interval system. So we know it's 1 and 12 would be for the time. So when we're reading hours, we always want to say if it's on 12, we know that's going to be 12 o'clock. But then when we look for minutes, guys, again, it's a 5, it's um, intervals of 5. So we always know when we're reading and we're looking at the reading um, for the minutes, like in example 6 here, and it's on the 12, that we'll make sure that we write that it's 60 or that it's 0 because we want to make sure that 12, we know 12 is a placeholder because when you hit 60, you hit the next minute. All right, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it really broke down um, a simple way to read an analog clock. Awesome. Have a wonderful day.